First time I learned about environmental justice, I was in my sophomore chemical engineering class. We were offered extra credit to watch the Love Canal documentary. I went back to that professor's office every single day until he finally agreed to change the project curriculum to be focused on environmental remediation and Superfund sites. Through that research, I looked at over 33 different Superfund sites across the country and began to learn about another term called environmental racism. In America, the majority of the population, two thirds of the population is considered to be white. The minority of the population, one third of the population is inclusive of every other race. The Black Panthers were the original group to make the connection between environmental hazards and the people that live next to them. Disproportionately, the minority population faces the majority of the burdens of living next to environmental hazards, including higher health problems, higher cancer rates, and ultimately higher death rates. There has to be a connection between the people that are facing all of the environmental burdens and the fact that it is the minority of the people in America. Though the term environmental racism was coined in 1970, environmental racism was built into the foundation of America. Slavery was created because some people were fit to work in the environmental hazards and some just weren't. Where plantations existed is where currently chemical plants exist today. And the majority of the people who live next to plantations are the ones who live next to chemical plants. And because of that, those areas oftentimes had less political clout, less ability and less resources to stand up and say, we don't want this here. And because of that, a lot of these chemical plants had the ability to live in these areas with these people and those who had houses there oftentimes had their property value decrease so much they couldn't leave, even if they wanted to. And in the world that we live in today, environmental racism is something that has just been exported all across the world. The most vulnerable people in the world are the ones who face the most environmental hazards and environmental pollution so that, again, a small amount of people in the world can get the benefits of that. Those who work in fast fashion, animal agriculture, aquaculture, mining, and in the areas that create technology, those are the ones who face incredibly high death rates, cancer rates, and are the most vulnerable to rising sea levels and drastic weather changes. We have the ability to change the course of the world, but we have to understand how we got to this point in time. Environmental racism is not a new concept. It has been happening at large for thousands and hundreds of years. And because of that, we need to understand how our choices and decisions today right now every single one you get to make impact how this world is continuing and if we choose we can make decisions that create a new world and we have to do it together but it all begins with a choice